computer can understand only binary language or a machine level language that deals with zeros and ones both compiler and interpreter will going to convert high level programming language into its equivalent machine language source code needs to be translated into machine code or a object code then only the execution of program will going to take place we have some mnemonics or a symbolic representation with the help of this assembler that will be converted into its equivalent machine language everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome back to the session 11 of the unit 1 in the bcs first semester subject called fundamentals of computers i am rohini ts department of computer science vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru before getting into our today's session we'll just have a quick recap of our previous session in the last session of this unit we got to know regarding what is software and what are the different types of software we have right after that you got to know regarding the computer languages total it is of two languages one is low level language and another one is high level language so in the low level language we have a machine level language and assembly level language that is what we had a discussion in the last class so in our today session we'll going to look about this language translator anyway we got to know that computer can understand only machine level language so there it will going to be uh, deals with zeros and ones then what about assembly level language and high level language how computer can understand in order to make it translation so from the high level or assembly level to its machine level language there we have this language translator after that i will be discussing regarding the linker and loader after this linker and loader i will be discussing regarding programming a computer so in this we will be understanding what is coding or a programming and how it will going to be done so before that coding what are the prerequisites we have algorithm and flow chart i'm going to discuss all those things in this session as well as in the coming session let me get into today's session that's all related to language translation as i discussed earlier computer can understand only binary language or a machine level language that deals with zeros and ones so in order to do the translation from high level or assembly level language we have this language translator this will going to translate the high level language to low level language that's all related to what machine level language so that there are three types of translator we have that includes assembler compiler and interpreter we'll going to see each type one by one so here you can see that we have a assembler already we know about the assembly level language there they are going to use the mnemonics or a symbols and some of the uh, characters or alphabets in order to write a code so in this assembler this is also system software that is inbuilt which translates an assembly level language program into its machine language so here we have some uh, mnemonics or a symbolic representation with the help of this assembler that will be converted into its equivalent machine language this assembler will going to recognize the mnemonics or a symbol which is used in the assembly level language and that will be substituting its required machine code for each instruction then computer will be able to understand this is what they had written in the assembly level language then what are the examples we have for that here we have a tasm that is turbo assembler and one more example we have which is by the microsoft that is masm microsoft macro assembler these two are the examples which comes under this assembler and here you can see that we have a source code which is written by the programmer that will be converted into object code or a machine code with the help of this assembler this assembler will converting the source code into its equivalent machine code fine next we'll see about the compilers so you need to understand one thing here there is a slight difference between a compiler and interpreter both compiler and interpreter will going to convert high level programming language into its equivalent machine language so you just consider this is one program this is another program imagine so it consists of five lines okay so consider this is compiler this is interpreter okay so both compiler and interpreter will going to do the same thing that is what translation from a high level programming language into its equivalent machine code but this compiler will going to compile or it will going to read 
whole program at once and that will going to be translated into its equivalent machine code. So, if I have 500 lines, 1000 lines or any 5 lines, that whole program will going to be read by this compiler and that whole program will be converted into its equivalent machine code. But that is not in the case of interpreter. It will going to read each line or one statement at a time. So, for example, this compiler will going to what read all the file lines completely, then that all file lines will be converted into its equivalent machine code. But in the interpreter, it will read single line. If there is no error, then that first line will be converted into its equivalent machine code. After that, it will come to the second line, third line until it reaches to the end of a program. That is what a slight difference between this compiler and interpreter. I hope you all understood regarding that. It's a system software that translates high level language that is what source code into the machine level language. Mainly it will going to read the whole program and that will be translating that whole program or an entire program at a time or at once it will going to be convert that into series of machine level instruction. Here you can see that we have a source code with the help of compiler that is translated into machine code. C and C++ are the example for this compiler. Then what about interpreter? This interpreter will going to read one statement of a high level programming language at a time. It is not reading a whole program or a whole application. It is reading only one statement at a time and that one statement will be translating it. So, it's equivalent machine level language and then it will going to execute that immediately if there is no error. Okay, that is what the sum of the slight difference between compiler and interpreter. So, but if you consider the speed, this interpreter will be slower. Why? Because it has to translate one statement at a time. So, it will going to take more time. More space is also required. That is why it is slower and it is taking more space than the compiler. And examples are basic and prolog. I hope you all understood regarding this language translator and also it is important topic for your examination. Next we will see the next topic that is all related to linkers and loaders. So, as just imagine you have a pieces of program, you had written area of circle in one program and area of a triangle in one program, area of rectangle in another program. So, what if I wanted to combine all those together? Then we have this linker. Linker will going to help us or it is act as a system software that links or it combines or it will going to integrates all the smaller programs in order to form a single program. So this is my one program, this is my another program, consider P1, P2. So with the help of this linker, it will going to compile or it will going to combine all the smaller program in order to make it as a single program. So, this is regarding what linker. Now, the executable program is ready. In order to execute it, that should be stored in computer's memory. Whatever we have in a computer's primary or main memory, only that content will going to be executed. Then, who is going to load all these link program? then that will going to be done by this loader. So, loader is a system software that loads machine code of a program into the system memory and prepares this program for execution. So, by making use of a linker, we are going to link all the small program to make it as a single program. After that linking is got over, in between we require a translator. Why? Because this loader is loading the machine code. So, if we have high level language or assembly level language, then that can't be loaded directly to the computer's memory. Only machine code can be loaded to system memory. That is why in between translation is required. After that with the help of this loader that will going to load that machine code into a system memory or a primary memory of a computer. Then it will going to helpful for us in order to do the execution. It is all regarding what linkers as well as loader. So, now we got to know what are the different computer languages we have, how the translation will going to take place, then who is going to do the linking and loading of that complete program or a whole application to the systems memory, fine. Now, we will start with the coding or we will start with programming a computer. Without knowing a problem, it is difficult to 
uh, get the result or it is difficult to find the solution for that. So here we have a programming a computer that will going to help us in order to get to know what problem is all about and we have to do the analysis after that that should be designed after the design that should be converted into some programming code or a programming format. So here computer programming is the process of writing a code to facilitate specific action in a computer application or even in a software program and instruct them on how to perform. So we are giving an instruction to the computer by making use of some of the construct or by making use of some of the syntax or a set of protocol. Then we are calling that as a computer program. And also this is a process of performing a particular computation. So we are performing a particular computation or a task here mainly by designing and building an executable computer program. Already you know program is a set of instruction. By having that set of instruction we are making a computer to understand what user is seeking for. And also here you need to remember two words that is what source code and machine code. Source code is a code or a program which is written by programmer or which can be written by making use of one or more programming languages which can be understood only by the programmer fine after that that machine code we have which can be understood only by the computer source code needs to be translated into machine code or a object code then only the execution of program will going to takes place after understanding all these things what we can conclude with respect to programming a computer in order to find a it's a way or it's a process of finding a sequence of instruction that will automate the performance of a task on a computer for solving a given problem main agenda is for to solve a problem how we are going to solve that by making or by having a set of instruction then we are calling that as a program here I hope you all understood regarding this programming a computer. In order to do this, we have a algorithm. First, we have to understand what algorithm is all about. After that, we'll see what is flowchart and what are the symbols there we are going to use. Okay. Here, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a given problem. So here we have a problem or we have something needs to be solved. So that is what main agenda here. We are in the algorithm or by making use of a algorithm that is what the step by step procedure in order to solve a given problem. So the word algorithm is originate from the word algorithm and that means what process of doing arithmetic with Arabic numerals. This is what what comes from algorithm and that means what we are doing some arithmetic tasks with the help of Arabic numerals mainly algorithm is a step by step procedure. So then we will see what are the different characteristics we have for this algorithm. So if I wanted to consider anything as an algorithm then that must be a what step by step procedure in order to uh, reach to the solution of a given problem. First is what input. The algorithm should be able to take input. Without taking the input it is can't, it can't be processed. If it is not processing then it won't give the result in. So that algorithm must take or accept one or more data which needs to be processed. Next what definite. So it must have certain specific tasks to be done. So here each and every instruction must clearly specify that what should be done. So anyway it is a step by step procedure. Each step should perfectly or definitely should specify what we are doing and what should be done in the particular step. And what is the next characteristic that is effective. So it should reach to the conclusion as a resultant. So the effect, whatever the step by step solution or a procedure we are having that should be effective in nature with the minimum number of stages or a step it should yield the result. So here so each operation step can at least in principle is carried out by a person using a paper and pencil in a minimum number of time. The number of steps what we are using in order to take a resultant or a a solution that should be done within a minimum number of time and terminate and after certain minimum number of operation algorithm must come to an end. So it should not be infinite at certain stage or a step the algorithm should get end by giving a result end. After taking an input after processing that should produce a output. So here algorithm is written to solve the problem therefore it must produce one or more computed results or answer then we are calling that as an output. 
okay so these are the different characteristics we have it must include input then that should be definite in nature should be effective and at some point that should get terminated and then it has to produce the output or a result in all these are the characteristics of algorithm we'll see how we are going to write an algorithm we'll start with an example so here i have an example that is to find the area of a rectangle so how we are going to find the area of a rectangle before writing all these uh, algorithm flowchart and all you just imagine yourself here we have a rectangle i wanted to find its area so here we have to uh, find length and breadth we have to multiply the value of length and breadth then it will going to give the area of a rectangle isn't it then here as i told earlier it is a step by step procedure in the first step we have to do the start we have to start writing a algorithm always the first step will be start last step will be stop in between we are going to take a input processing or calculation after that output okay so in the step to what we have to do we have to read the values for l and b so l represent the length and b represent the breadth of a rectangle so we are taking a input l comma b that is step 2 then in the step 3 we have to calculate the area of a rectangle how we are going to find a area of a rectangle that is length into breadth so that is what we are doing as a calculation i am storing that multiplied value in one variable called rectangle rec so there i am finding the calculation of this length into breadth and that will be copied to this rectangle variable then in the step 4 we have to print the area of a rectangle so in order to print it in order to take a input we have a word called input in order to uh, print the output we have a output display and print those three words can be used in order to write the output output display or print what we have to print here rec why because the multiplied value or a calculated values are stored in the variable called rec what if i am using this as area at the time output area so once we got the result and we should what uh, end the algorithm so that is what step 5 stop so first step is start next read the values which is necessary then uh, after the analysis do the calculation then print the result and and stop okay this is how we are going to find the area of rectangle then how can we find the uh, average of four numbers that is what one more uh, example here to find the average of four numbers so first you need to understand what the kind of problem it is average of four numbers in the sense what i need to add all the four numbers then that should be divided whole divided by four then we are going to get the average of four numbers right so first step is what start we have to start then in the step 2 input a b c d mam is it necessary only to take a b c d you can take any variables but it should not be numbers we have a rules in order to write the identifier it should not be numbers so it should be any variables or alphabets and in the step 3 we are calculating that is i am having a variable called average i am summing up of all a b c d a plus b plus c plus d whole divided by Four. For example, if my uh, value of y is ten, twenty, thirty, forty, ten plus twenty, twenty plus thirty, thirty plus forty, everything will be summed or added together, and that will be wholly divided by four. That value will going to be stored in a variable called average. That is in the step four, we are writing a output instead of this output. You can also take display or you can also take print. these two words can also be used okay so here when we got the result and at last that should be stop in the last step that is stop this is how we are going to write an algorithm so you also try to write an algorithm to find the area of a circle and try to find the largest of two numbers largest of two numbers I hope you all understood our today's session. It's all regarding our today's session. In the next session, we are going to learn about this flowchart. So flowcharts are like blueprint. So by looking into that blueprint, we are going to build a house or a building, isn't it? So that is also symbolic representation. You will get to know what is flowchart, what are the importance, and what are the different symbols we have in that. And then at last, we're going to see about the pseudo code. It's all about our today's session. Let me meet you in the next session. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.